All right, what's up everyone? Um, pulled another clip for you guys today. I'm gonna walk through sight fishing, big fish and catch and release areas. Let's go do it. All right, what's up everyone? Like I said, I pulled another clip today and I'm gonna quickly walk through sight fishing a big brown uh, in the San Juan River in New Mexico. This is from a trip uh, in March, just before COVID shut everything down. I think I was there two days before COVID happened and everything closed down. So pretty fantastic time to be there. It's busy, it always is, but uh, the fish are there. And uh, I think this is a good example of catch and release areas that see a lot of traffic. And I'm gonna walk through today just how to go about, you know, sight fishing, big fish in uh, trophy fish and quality waters and places that see a lot of traffic. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about is um, the difference between catch release areas and say wild trout like that are in remote areas. Uh, catch release areas, fish get used to seeing people so you can get a little bit closer and you can see I'm going to walk in on this fish and get within probably 15 feet of it. Uh, the big difference in most cases though, when I'm in Wyoming or someplace like that and I'm more remote, I'm probably fishing 3x tippet because the fish they just want to, they're going to eat. Like, so you don't have to be like super shy on your leader and tippet. Catch and release area, that is completely different. Uh, where a lot of times you'll hear me say when you're nymphing, it's not so much about the fly as it is about getting down in the right depth and getting the right drift. Catch and release areas, you got to get the right drift, but this is the one time where I think you might be able to switch flies uh, a little bit sooner than you normally would. And, and that's because uh, the fish don't, they're not necessarily going to be spooked by your presence but the wrong type of fly, too large, uh, and the wrong size tippet could easily put these fish down pretty quickly. So uh, this is one of those cases where I'm like, yeah, switch flies. If you've gotten three or four drifts through an area and the fish is, he hasn't spooked and he's still there, but he's not responding to you, it's time to time to make a change. And I'll do this and I'll walk through later, but I probably switch flies on, on this, this fish probably six times uh, before I get into take. So let's just start the video and I'll walk through. Like I said, it's the San Juan, it's always got traffic. Uh, Couple boats come through. The first one, he was uh, he was pretty cool. He didn't guides on the wand are pretty nice. Um, this guy he didn't he didn't row through the area. So show you where the fish is at. He's about right there. He's kind of hiding behind a rock. Um, decent brown. This is my fourth day on the wand, so I'm kind of familiar with the area. So I was uh, I didn't walk in on this fish the first day. Like when you're stumbling around, you're kind of like filling everything out. It's always great to have a little bit of awareness, uh, and you get that by you know revisiting areas. So seen this fish. I'm fishing him now couple drifts and you know he's not responding again the boat comes by and like I said these fish usually don't spook with people uh, and, and same thing boat comes by fish is still there which is cool just gonna go he's gonna go by I'm gonna I'm gonna slow down or I'm gonna rest this fish for half a second and go ahead and make a change um, boat went by I'm not really sure if he spooked or not he could be put down but either way like I will rest the fish. Anytime you, you don't want to just keep pounding the fish. So if they're not responding to you, give them a couple seconds, change flies. Here I'm going to go ahead and adjust the indicator, maybe adjust the weight, whatever it is, uh, and just you know, give them a half a second to uh, just not have you know a, a boat on top of them or a fly like dripping from his face. So back to casting again. Just going through it. Uh, I'm using 10 foot four weight. This gets me you know a lot closer to the fish. And like I said, I usually try to high stick these situations. Uh, 10 foot gives me a lot of reach. The four weight is great for presentation. So it's definitely a uh, something I believe in when I'm fishing catch and release areas. So again, drifted through this fish like three or four more times. Time to make a switch. I hit the camera when I'm doing that, turn the camera off because I'm trying to save battery and SD card life. And at this point, like I must have switched so many times that I'm I'm done even dealing with the camera because I'll leave it on and I'm gonna run through like everything, which is kind of good because now you can kind of see where I'm at. I'm catching moss on my fly which lets me know that I'm in the right zone. So I'm not gonna adjust the depth anymore, like I'm good. I know where I'm at, I just need to make I just need to make a couple fly adjustments here. Um, and I pull the fly box out and let me pause it right here and I'll explain everything that's going on. So, like I said earlier, catch release areas, fish get leader and tippet shy. So I'm fishing 5X fluorocarbon to my first fly, 6X fluorocarbon to my second fly. I definitely believe in small flies. I start off with a size 20, so my top fly is a size 20, probably a betis, maybe a midge. It's gonna be something pretty natural, uh, dark, you know, or a tan or a light, but nothing with a lot of flash. I'm doing as natural as I can. Um, and if you look in the fly box, you'll see size 20, size 22, size 24. And I have it written in red across uh, because I have copper lenses and it picks out reds in the water. 
It's also my Dorsey indicator. You can see I'm using a yarn indicator here, and there's a little bit of hint of red in there. And I know it's hard to see on the on the video, but it comes it just it it comes out in the in the uh, in my sunglasses really really well, so I can see it and pick it up. Um, I use camel indicators a lot when I'm sight fishing because they just kind of blend in, and but I can see them. So. Cover lenses, if you haven't considered them, they're great for picking up the red stripe on the sides of rainbows. Uh, brown sitting on the bottom, pretty easy to see. Uh, redfish in the marsh, yeah, they kind of glow. So just run through this. My top fly is a size 20. My second fly will be a size 22. I will start off with a tan or a light color because my top fly was dark. Uh, so I always like the contrast between the two. Um, after I've drifted through three or four times, I'll change that bottom fly. So I go from tan to a dark fly. If nothing happens on the dark fly, then I switch up and go to a size 24 and I go back to a light color. If by some chance the fly doesn't get taken on a size 24 and a light color, then it's time to switch to a dark color. So this I know because I'm, sw I'm switching to a, or I'm tying on a size 24 uh, midge pattern here uh, and it's a poly wing midge and it's a size 24 and it's a black pattern. I know that I've switched flies probably five times at this point. Um, and this is a, this is a fifth fly, maybe sixth fly in 15 minutes. So um, one word about flies, I don't believe in using, you know, like really bright colored flies, eggs, worms, past rubber legs, anything that's just kind of gaudy and, uh, just, you know, just imagine a fish that's been in the catch release area forever, sees a ton of flies, tons of patterns, big flies, bright flies, lots of flashy flies. A lot of times those, those, those types of flies turn these fish off. And if you cast in there with something that's kind of like that, just watch the fish's behavior. If he moves away from your fly even just a couple inches, the wrong direction, don't throw that fly back in there. This is that time when you wanna, you wanna pull out, switch off that fly, and just, if you know for sure you're like, you have a fly, like an egg on or something, and he moves like a couple feet from that egg, if you cast that fly back in there again, I guarantee you're gonna spook that fish. Like they, he's, he's told you everything you need to know about throwing an egg around him. So don't throw the egg. Uh, I'm definitely a believer in small, natural uh, colors and presentations. So here you go. Kind of put this out there so you can kind of see and highlight where the indicator is at. And it drips down here and you can kind of see where that fish was at. So, fish on, it's good times. Uh, 15 minutes in, I finally get this fish to eat. So, you know, several fly swaps. He's on 6x. Note the rod angle here. I'm trying to stay, you know, down. He's trying to swim across the river. Uh, I got the rod high. I don't want anything other than me putting pressure on that fine tippet. That's 6x, it's fluorocarbon. So, I'm pretty confident in it, but at the same time, I don't need it to. I don't need to grab any moss. I don't need to, you know, I don't need the, the extra pressure of like the current or whatever pulling on it. I just want it to be me. So play this fish, make sure I stay behind him. If he starts running, I'm gonna start running as well. So look down the river, make sure there's nobody in my way. Get my net ready. And at this point I start moving towards the fish uh, and he's and moving him towards me. And again, you know, they don't like people. So when he sees me, he's gonna freak out a little bit and just let him run. I mean, you know, I got this fish on the reel. As soon as he had, I, I reeled up all the line. I just back spun all that running line. And I didn't have a lot out because I was high sticking, so it didn't take much. So if I didn't touch on that earlier, like when you're high sticking and you know you're sight fishing a fish in one area, it's okay to like just have the line you need out. And that way, as soon as the fish eats, he's almost on the reel. Just helps uh, in the long run of landing big fish on fine tippet. So um, catch release, you know, I don't take a lot of hero shots, I take pictures of these big fish. They're sitting in these catch release areas getting caught a ton. So I think it's important to get them back in the water. But hey, I'm not discouraging anybody from taking your pictures. You travel all that way, pay the fishing license. Try to get them back in the water as fast as you can. You know, these fish, are, you know, they've seen a lot of traffic. They get caught a lot, so it's good for, uh, it's good on them, good on you to get them back in the water as quickly as possible. All right, guys, that's pretty much all the video. Uh, like I said, one fish, walk through everything I did from top to bottom. Uh, quickly talked about why I would choose fluorocarbon, why I choose natural flies, small flies, um, yarn indicators, dorsey indicators with a little bit of red so you can see them very well, why you would want a high stick, why you can get closer to bigger fish and catch and release areas because they're not necessarily people people shy, they're more leader and tippet shy, right? Uh, and then, you know, once you got a fish on, talked a little bit about, you know, rod angle and protecting that fine tippet. Uh, and uh, I don't know if there's anything else I can talk about today. So pretty much all I got, gonna put together some more videos for you um, and we'll get that together. But I uh, appreciate you watching the video as always. If you have questions, be sure you leave those. I'll, I, I try to get to those as, as, much, as soon as I can. Um, and anything else, leave in the comments and I'll get back to it and done. <laughs>